put your Bibles in your hands, repeating after me. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. This book calls me an overcomer. And that's who I am. The day I shall be taught the infallible, unchanging Word of God. So my mind is alert. My heart is receptive. As I gladly receive the word today, I believe that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Father, we thank you for what we're about to receive. And so, God, we serve notice on everything that's on assignment to hinder and to block and to stop. And we rebuke it in Jesus' name. And we declare no weapon formed against us shall prosper. But we thank you that this word will go forth with free course in it. And that the people would receive and have hearts to receive. We thank you for the open ground that is ready to receive the seed. And God, we bless them now in Jesus' name. Let the word of my mouth and meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And they all said. Amen. Amen. Steps to a miracle. And, and when I say steps to a miracle, we're not going to say step one, two, three, four, A, B, C, D, whatever. It, it's just here are some things that need to be in place. But for right now, we're just going to give it a go. And, 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 and steps to a miracle. And I just believe that this December is going to be Miracle Month. So I'm declaring Miracle Month. And I think we don't see miracles because we aren't looking for them anymore. Or we're not looking for miracles in the sense of pure miracles. Unless it has a fantastic attachment to it and a lot of fanfare, we don't think it's a true miracle. But they happen all day, every day. Amen? Amen. All day, every day. And, and the Bible just lists miracles for us, but they are the things that, that show us the example of that miracles can happen to ordinary people. And I dare say to sinner and saved. Some of the people who received miracles in the Bible had not been saved. But they released faith and belief and got a miracle. So a miracle is yours for the asking. But we have to just reacquaint ourselves with the fact that it's a part of being a Christian is to receive miracles and, 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 and know them when they show up. And sometimes we overlook the small ones looking for the big one. He pays a bill, but you're looking for the million. Amen. Amen. So, so uh, 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 here are some steps to a miracle. And I want to say, you can experience miracle manifestation in your life now. When? Now. When? Now. All right. All right. All right. How many are looking for a miracle? How many need a miracle right now? Some way or another, you need a miracle. And, and, and a miracle is something that, that isn't attached to you making it happen. It's supernatural. It's outside of you. How you make it happen, you can provoke it, but, but, but it's God that delivers it. That's, that's, that's a better way of saying it. He delivers it, but you have to expect it. All right, all right. Now, as, 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 as we have... Things coming in our future, and we're expecting kids. There's some miracles we, we need to come into place even around the whole situation. Yes. That's the thing. I'm personally believing for my kids, for their kids. Yes. Amen. 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 Did y'all understand how I say that? Yes. Yeah, I, I just start believing the form, you know. Yes. I just look down the future and say, say, I want this form, I want that form. And I didn't want no just small stuff. I want some great big stuff for them. I just... Just, just, just to live, make it and sit it down somewhere. Amen. 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 I'm going to give it a number, but 
whatever you do, you might just give it a dot. You got to believe in miracles. You won't see anything you don't believe in. Amen. And that's why the church doesn't see them because they don't believe they can see it. They'd rather read about them than see them. And when it's time to press toward believing for them, they don't believe for them and they don't get them. You've got to believe in miracles. Amen. Psalms 86, 8 and 10, in the New Living Translation. I'm going to jump around to, to some translations today. And it said, Nowhere among the pagan gods is there a god like you. This is the psalmist talking. Oh, Lord, there are no other miracles like yours. For you are great and perform great miracles. You alone are God. Starts with God, ends with God. You perform them. You serve a God of miracles. A miracle is the supernatural intervention of God in the problems of your life. It can be problems and situations. I wanted to add that. You don't necessarily have to have a problem to get a miracle. Sometimes it's just a situation that you want bumped up. All right? You got a job, but you want a better one. That's a situation. Amen? Anybody in that boat? I just, I, I, I just want better. You know? yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, some of y'all sitting here, you're just working. You like your pay scale. <laughs> <laughs> you, you never want it to change. All right. All right. By believing in the power of God, you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. My, you, why not go on and believe? If you got nothing to lose, it's a win-win situation for you. At some point in your life, you will, either, you will either be forced to live in the potential of your faith or with the consequence of your doubt. And too many of us are living in the consequences of our doubt. Each one of them our seed. And each one of them produce a fruit. Are you out there? Mark 9, 23 says, Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things, some things, are possible to him that does what? Believeth. It's possible if you believe. Jesus, 15 times in the New Testament said, Hear and understand. That's a problem. A lot of us hear, but we don't understand. But the understanding is what helps elevate your belief. Once you understand what God wants for you, you not only heard it, but you understand it enough to believe it, you move to a powerful place. Say with me, I must understand. understand. See, you just cannot be a hearer. You have to understand. Even when, 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 the, when the scripture says about how the earth was made and how God formed everything, he said, the, the, the saying is, is, the scripture says, and we understand that the worlds were formed. Meaning that we're not confused about how God did this. Because we understand. What was the world framed by? The word of God. We understand that. So we understand that whenever we say something, we can have what we say. All these years later, Jarrell, you just got what you said. Be careful your say-say. And we walk around speaking just crazy speech 
talking nonsensical stuff all the time and you and you just investing in your future. You're coloring a date with your tongue. And we're just so glib about it. We don't think about what we say. And everything don't merit a response from you. Something you just need to shut up about. I don't have no comment about that. No, I don't need to discuss that. You don't need to be in every discussion. Some of them you need to just do this. And, and kind of get quiet and say, all righty then, amen. <laughs> all right, amen, amen, amen. Bless God, you know, just turn it on God. That'll stop some people. <laughs> Every time he spoke of one of his big parables, he said, I need you to hear this. But I really need you to understand. That's what Jesus said when he talked to the disciples. I need you to hear it, but I need you to understand. Have you, have you been talking to somebody and you know the hearing apparatus is working, but they don't understand because you know they don't understand because they can't repeat what you said. But they, can't, they keep telling you, I'm listening to you. That's just to get you off their back. You, you're not hearing me. Husband and wife do it to each other all the time. You're not here. Baby. I have a grandbaby, and when she wants us to get our attention, she, she might say a, a, a word or two, but, but when she wants our attention and she don't think that we're paying her attention, that's hearing her, paying her attention. If she don't, you know, and, and she kind of heavy-handed. I don't know where them kids got that from, but she'll, 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 she'll take us and she'll just... Hit, hit us. She, I, you think she would do this just tap one time. But she don't do that. She does. I, wait just a minute. You can beat me up. What you want? And she wants my attention. And then she'll pass me the iPod. After, you know, iPad. After she can't find what she wants, you know, after she's been all over the world with it. She, <laughs> she, and then she'll point to it like, like, get me off this page and get me back to the to all the other icons so I can find what I need. Are you there? Do you understand what I'm saying? You must not only hear, but you need to understand. Look at somebody and say, do you understand? It's, the, it's, it's like in Lion King when, when, when young Simba didn't understand and Rafiki had to walk up to him and Rafiki always had that stick with the, with the coconut on the end. And he was being just straight up youthful and dumb. <laughs> Come on, he was just as dumb as mud to his purpose and everything. And, 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 and so, so he, 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 he wrapped him with it. He said, not, he, and, and, and Simba said, ow, oh, that hurt. He said, but do you understand? <laughs> you need to understand. And all thy getting. Get understanding, and you will be better off. In the, and this is the reason why the church isn't operating, because we don't understand God's ways. And his ways is he does signs and, mir and miracles. And you never have to run after miracles because he promised that they would overtake you. They would overrun you. Part of your life ought to be when you look back, it ought to be just sprinkled and dotted with miracles. Not every problematic situation, not every time you look back, you're looking in hell's door about something. I caught hell that year. That's the year the house was lost. That's the year that this happened. That's the year that that happened. That's the year that the government stepped. That's the year. Do you have some markers that say that's the year that God broke us out of debt? This is the year that I got this. This is the year that the kids, somebody just, this is the year somebody walked up and gave me a car. This is the year somebody gave me a house. This is the year that I got delivered from back problems. What kind of markers do you have walking with Jesus? You might like complaining, but don't nobody like listening to it. 
Then they will start running from you. Nobody want to hang around me. No. I'm like the woman in the wheel. Don't nobody bring me. All right. <laughs> Some of y'all can't even watch all them media stuff. You can't even watch the news because all you're doing is parroting what was on there. Such and such died on the east side. I'm just saying. Y'all still out there? Amen. Hearing changes nothing. Hearing by itself. But understanding brings direction and action into our lives. Understanding brings what? And in our lives. When I understand something, my life will change. There are so many financial opportunities out there, but you must have your understanding increased to even go after that. If you want to build a new house, you need to understand. When you want to do a new project, the Bible says, first you sit down and count up the cost. First you sit down and get an understanding. You just jump out there and say, say we're going to start doing this, we're going to start. But you don't have any, any, any information behind it. And so it's a failure because you didn't operate off of information, you operated off of inspiration. But inspiration without information is failure. Ooh. It allows us to put our nets where the miracles are waiting. When the fishermen needed to catch fish on the boat with Jesus, they hadn't caught anything all night. All night. And you don't catch fish in the daytime for them. But all night they had caught nothing. But if you were a miracle working God, he knows where the fish are. And if he don't, and, and, and if the fish don't know where they should be, he tells them. <laughs> See, y'all think everything have to be there. Maybe he needs to move it there. You are already standing there, so he said, get to the other side of the boat. Throw your net down there. That's where the miracles are. That's why you need to tap into God, because he knows where the miracles are. Yes, yes. He knows where to tell you to let down your net. Yes. And you, you way on the east side, and he said, would you get on Horatio or military? <laughs> Sometimes you miss it by being out of joint. Yes. Oh. 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 <laughs> wow. Two. Or B, or doubt, or dip. Visualize your miracle. You want a miracle? How you want it? God begins every miracle with a mental photograph. Whatever you need, see it. See it. I'll never forget a story that Dee Dee Freeman and her husband, Bishop Freeman, over in Washington, how he had gotten really sick and just, it was, the doctors had thought it was unto death. But first thing she did was stop anybody from coming that she would think that wouldn't talk faith over him. Because you don't need that. Amen. You don't need people that's already seeing they got a vision for you, but it's in a casket. Yes. Yes. You know, some people, first time they hear an announcement, they're already at your funeral. Right. Amen. Amen. 
So them the ones you need to throw out first. And so what she ended up doing was put up pictures of her husband, Mike Freeman, all over the room like he was, she said, when he was swagalicious. Just put all his great pictures up, him on his bike, everything. And that's what she, her vision for him was. And every time he looked up, he had to look at them pictures. Now, what he saw in the actual mirror didn't look like the picture. But the pictures that she wanted was on the wall. So she kept feeding him, I see you, Mike. But she was really looking past Mike and looking at the picture. Yeah. Come on. Are y'all there? Yeah. See, you have to visualize your miracle. You want it, but what does it look like? Oh. You want everybody else's picture. You want to say it, but you don't want to understand that I have to provoke it by, by putting the picture in my head. This is what I want to see. It may not happen that minute, that week, that month, but you keep the picture up. And if it falls down, you get it and you, you put it back up. No, 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 devil. Uh, and, and situations will come to try to knock the picture away from you. No, 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 devil. This is what I got to have. This is the picture. This is what I need to have. No, no, no. I know this went wrong. I know he's had a setback and 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 and, and they're really working on his breathing real hard now. But 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 I, I I'm I'm still looking at the picture. Yeah. Then after months, things started turning around. And he started getting better. And one day he walked out of that hospital that he had written into. And she was looking at the picture. Do you understand what I'm saying? You're not getting it because you won't get a photograph in your head. You'd rather live with it than take a snapshot. Pull your camera out. I thought to say, pull your brownie out, but that would have dated me. <laughs> pull your Polaroid, anywhere you can take a picture. Yeah. Yeah. You need a vision of your miracle. Yeah. Write that down. I need a vision of my miracle. I need something to look at before it shows up. You're sitting on a pew that was somebody's picture. You're riding in a car that was somebody's picture. I'm riding in a car that's really smart, but it's not smart as me because you can't do nothing until I get into you and turn the key on. You're not smart as me because I still have to tell you what to do for me. Your brain just gets up in operation after I say what I need. But you don't know what I need till I tell you. There's nothing smarter than you Amen. on the planet. Amen. God made you just that bad. Every architect draws a picture before the building begins. Every architect, every building was a picture, flat, one-dimensional. It was flat. When we built our house, it was plans. They were flat. I knew where the bathroom was, but there was no toilet and no bathtub and no sinks, but it was the bathroom. Yeah. I believed they were going to put a bathroom there. And this, this morning, I showered in that bathroom that I believed that they were put there based on the picture that I saw. Are you out there? Yeah. What do you have a vision for? Whew. There's certain conditions that I've been caring with. God just slapped me. He said, are you believing for a miracle on that song? That's why I told you to touch yourself last week. You know, just believe. I'm saying that I'm back here today. I got a picture. And some of you need to make an internal picture. 
what your heart ought to be, what your blood pressure ought to be, what your knees ought to be, what your this ought to be, what your that ought to be, whatever the problem. You, do you, you have a picture. Find a healthy one, look at it. Even if your hair thinning, find some, something with some hair. Oh, Lord. Get you a vision for something. Oh, God, God has created you great. And here's the wonderful thing about your picture. An architect can only do it flat, one-dimensional until the builders start going. But God gives you 3D. You see your stuff like it is. It almost like, have you ever dreamed that you were in something and it was so real till it blew your mind and you got mad when you woke up? You said, dog. Because God, God lets us dream in reality. Ooh, in 3D. Short of touching it. And we wake up and look around and say, no, oh, let me go back to sleep. <laughs> and you can't get back to that dream. But I think it's just a foretaste. A preview. Of a coming attraction. Are, are you out there? God gives you previews. Of, of, of coming attractions. I just give you a glimpse of it. So you can believe for it. And for that instance. While you're dreaming about it. You ain't thought about nothing else. That's going wrong in your life. You're just living in the glory. And it feels so good. It blows your mind. When you wake up. You almost cussed. Ah. Are you out there? Amen. Write this down. I need to visualize my miracle. Then next to that, I will visualize my miracle. And next to that, I will have my miracle. Next to that, I hope you remembered all three of them I just said. God's promise is so very important because every Bible hero has had to start right here by visualizing their miracle. It was Abraham, Moses, all of them had to visualize. And when they had a problem, God would take them places. Abraham could not receive from God until he saw himself the way God intended for him to be. He could not receive from God until he saw it. So God wanted him to be the father of many nations. Abraham couldn't comprehend it because of situational crisis. I'm an old dude. Nations, that means a baby got to come from somewhere. Oh. Abraham saw himself child. And as long as this unscriptural vision of himself prevailed, no miracle child, there would have never been an Isaac. Hmm. Maybe you're not getting your Isaac, and that's baby for anything you want. Because you can't visualize what God told. Hear the unbelief that filled Abraham's imagination. Genesis 15, 2 says, Lord God, what will thou give me seeing I go child? He's ready for the secondary plan. Yes. What will you give me since I go childless? I got to get something. What will you give me? God said, I'm going to give you what I told you I'm going to give you. He didn't change his mind. Amen. And sometimes we settle for second best. Rather than believing for what God said. So what did God say? Whatever he said, that's, that, that's his choice. Wow, wow, wow. Can you just imagine God saying, Abraham, I can't give you a child if you don't see yourself with a child. 
I want you to get a fresh new vision of the countless generations I am going to give you. Scripture tells us that everything changed as soon as Abraham began to see himself receiving from God. When did he do it? Well, God said, come outdoors. Come out of your tent. Some of you need to get out your joint and go looking at something so you can get a vision of it. You don't get a vision of it because you sleep and you're on the couch and you're in the bed at 3 in the afternoon. You, you, don't, you can't see nothing. So sometimes he has to relocate you somewhere else so you can see something else. Tap somebody and tell them, move out, out, get out of here. Come on, come on, come on. You're in the same spot. You're looking for a miracle, but you're just standing there. And the next thing that happened, the devil just lulls you straight to sleep. What you doing? I'm waiting for a miracle. No, you're not. You're resting. You're resting. He has to shift your paradigm so you can believe differently. And some of the stuff in your head has not uh, brought forth the things that you need to see because that's what you've led yourself to believe. That's why many of us, we are legend in our own mind. Genesis 15 and 5 says, then he brought him outside. Where did he go? Outside. Why did he need to move? Because he couldn't see where he was. Yes. And he said, look now toward heaven yes. and start counting the stars. He would already told him he'd make him father of nations. He said, now come outdoors. Look up. Wow, that's a lot of stars. And count the stars. Count what? Anybody ever, as a kid, you laid down on the ground at night and tried to count the stars and, and, and you lost count after a while because, you know, they start twinkling different and you thought, I missed that one. One, two, three. Then you started all over again. I believe God put most stars in Abraham's heaven that night that was normally there. He saw more than the astronomers saw. They were stars from one side to the other. He, he Count, where do I begin? Maybe God wants to tell you, look up so you can see something countless. And he said to him, so shall your descendants be. And now all those years later, Almost close to a billion people later. Here we are. But he got the one child, Isaac. And after Isaac came, Jacob. Then his sons, and his sons, and his children, and his children, and his children. And then one of the sons would go to a cross. And then here comes all of us engrafted into the family. Come on. Come on. Come on. Who weren't supposed to be in the family. But we were a part of the count over in the corner. <laughs> we weren't Jewish. We were just. In the count. Yes, Somebody ought to bless God. I was yes. in the count. Yes. Abraham visualized his generation of children every time he beheld the stars at night. The ne this, oh boy, I don't have to focus your faith. Yes. Don't focus on your setback. Spend your time planning your comeback. Because if you languish in your setback, you will say you will stay set back. You fail, 
Get up, dust yourself off, keep moving. It didn't work. You learn how to be a better cook because something came out bad. I hope not this Thanksgiving, but. <laughs> you learn how to cook a cake because you had some failed ones. Yes. I learned how to make, make a better peach cobbler after I made some flubs. My first cooking experience is I wanted to, 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 to emulate. I was about 10 years old, and I practiced on my brothers and sisters. I wanted to emulate a McDonald's special sauce. Well, if you know anything about mayonnaise and stuff, you have to keep it cold. Yeah. And long after everybody got over their sickness, <laughs> Lynn still remembers it to this day. She said, Riley, what was that you made for us? I laid the whole family out. I almost reduced the star count that day. But thankfully, I'm a little bit better. Because I didn't stay in a setback. You pick yourself up and you keep going. Your focus will either be a destiny maker or a destiny breaker. Where are you? Destiny maker or destiny breaker. When it comes to miracle manifestation, we must focus our faith. And we must be specific. Stop doing scattergun praying. Yeah. Lord, bless me every time, everywhere, every day, all day, anytime. If somebody came to you and asked you, what do you want? Tell me in three words or less. Five words or less. Could you be able to do it? What do you want? Do you know? Ooh. Don't just ask for money. Money for what? See, you're looking at the good time money. I want money to pay this bill off. How many of you know what the balance is on every one of your bills? Ooh, that should stay before you every month. And not in the addition column, but the subtraction column. How many of you know? If you don't know, you ought to know. Get specific when you ask God for a miracle. Be exact in your request for a specific. If the bill is $39.99, ask for $39.99. Don't say, God, I know you're going to give me more than that. Then ask for... Ooh. For a specific salary increase, for business opportunity, don't simply ask for more money. Your faith needs an assignment. Yes. Give your faith an assignment. Give it an assignment. Focus on the particular need or desire you want. Need and desire. It's okay to ask for your desire. Don't let anyone's attitude or words distract you. Philippians 4 and 6 says, Do not be anxious. This is from the Amplified. Do not be anxious for... Or worried about anything. Worried. It's akin to doubt. And unbelief. But in everything. How many things? Everything. That's every circumstance and situation. By prayer and petition. With thanksgiving. Yes. Continue to make your. What kind of request? Specific. What kind of request? Specific. Exact. This is what I need. Request known to God. Yeah. 
Don't bargain with God. This is where I'm going to end up at. Don't bargain with God. Be direct. Ask for what you need. This isn't, uh, uh, and, and according to Matthew 7, 1 to 11 in the message, and, and I'm going to read it to you, and this is where I'm going to close out today. It said, don't bargain with God. Be direct. Ask for what you need. This isn't a cat and mouse hide and seek game we're in. If your child asks for bread, do you trick him with sawdust? If he asks for fish, do you scare him with a live snake on his plate? As bad as you are, you wouldn't think of such a thing. You're at least decent to your own children. So don't you think the God who conceived you in love will be even better. Don't you think the God that conceived you would be even better? When you get specific with God, he gets specific with you. Focus your faith. Blessings to you today. Father, we thank you. And we give you glory for good, solid, straightforward teaching. Help us to set a good picture. Give us camera eyes that we can take snapshots of who and what we want to be, where we want to go, and we're specific. So today we receive miracles. And we believe for it in every way. If you're believing for a specific miracle, just, just hold up one of your hands.